Good morning. Good morning. God is good. And all the time, God is good. He's taking care of Kelly this morning. Kelly's not feeling well this morning and uh, was a little bit on the fence maybe about whether she would try to make it down. Um, we told her, no, go back to bed, relax. Uh, we, we can handle things here and she needs to get well. So God is taking her that, in that direction this morning. My name is Ryan Lewis. For those of you who may not know me, I'm looking and I'm pretty sure everybody knows me. Okay, and and I am the lay leader. I'll be taking us wherever the Holy Spirit leads us today. Um, Today we will be talking a bit about veterans and uh, Veterans Day and our scripture passages will deal mostly with grace. We'll be talking about grace today. So I invite you all to be in the spirit of worship and let's see where the Holy Spirit will take us as we begin With our call to worship, please stand. God is our refuge and strength. We will not fear. Even when all the world trembles. We will not fear. Are you glad to hear the voice of God? We rejoice as we come together before God. Let us worship God. And let's sing together our opening hymn. My life flows on, and it is number 2212. I believe that's in the little black book, not the big hymnal. Join me in the uh, prayer of praise 
of adoration. We sing together. praise together with King, King David, David from, from of old. You, you are Lord, our, our rock and our fortress. fortress. You deliver us from all chaos that surrounds us. You are our shield and our salvation. When we, when we call, call upon you, you hear, you hear us and listen to, to our prayers. You are our refuge and our stronghold. You hear us today as we come to worship you with all that we have and all that we are. Amen. And please join me in the prayer of confession. Lord, we claim that we will not fear, but there are times that we do. When the world is filled with chaos, our hearts are too. We know that you are present, but we do not as though we know. You are in the midst of us all, but we do not see you. The nations are in uproar and challenge nation against nation. Speak your truth to the world, O Lord. Change our hearts and help us to show the change to others so that all the world might be transformed. Become a safe harbor for us and still us in body, mind, and soul so that we will not know who we are. We exalt you, O Lord. Hear these words of assurance of pardon. Jesus speaks plainly to us about God so that we may have peace through him. Jesus speaks of God's grace and forgiveness. Whenever you come to God with humility asking for forgiveness, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. First scripture reading this morning is from Second uh, Samuel, chapter 22, verse 1 through 7. David spoke to the Lord the words of this song on the day when the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. He said, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge, my savior, you save me from violence. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised and I am saved from my enemies. For the waves of death encompassed me, the torrents of perdition assailed me, the cords of Sheol entangled me, the snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. To my God, I called. From his temple, he heard my voice. This is a word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I say your name. I you solemnly swear. You swear. Support and defend. Support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The United States. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. And to bear true faith. And bear true faith. And allegiance to the same. of the United States, the United States and, the of and the orders of those officers, those officers appointed, over me, appointed over me according to regulations, according to regulations and the uniform code of military justice. Code of military justice. So, help me God. so help me God.
we celebrate Veterans Day on the anniversary of the armistice that ended World War I. The armistice that began on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. The timing of this holiday is quite deliberate in terms of historical fact. But somehow it always seems quite fitting to me that this day comes deep in autumn when the colors are muted and the days seem to invite contemplation. It is, in a way, an odd thing to honor those who died in defense of our country, in defense of us, in wars far away. The imagination plays a trick. We see these soldiers in our mind as old and wise, but most of them were boys when they died, and they gave up two lives, the one they were living and the one they would have lived. When they died, they gave up their chance to be husbands and fathers and grandfathers. They gave up their chance to be revered old men. They gave up everything for our country, for us. And all we can do is remember. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. In memory of those who gave the last full measure of devotion, may our efforts to achieve lasting peace gain strength. Let us make a vow to our dead. Let us show them by our actions that we understand what they died for. Strengthened by their courage, heartened by their value, and born by their memory, let us continue to stand for the ideals for which they lived and died. In the long history of the world, only a few generations have been granted the role of defending freedom in its hour of maximum danger. I do not shrink from this responsibility. I welcome it. I do not believe that any of us would exchange places with any other people or any other generation. The energy, the faith, the devotion which we bring to this endeavor will light our country and all who serve it. We shall pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, oppose any foe to assure the survival and the success of liberty.
This morning's gospel reading is uh, from the book of John, chapter 16, verses 25 through 33. I have said these things to you in figures of speech. The hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures, but will tell you plainly of the Father. On that day you will ask in my name. I, did, I do not say to you that I will ask the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed I'm leaving the world, and I'm going to the Father. His disciples said, Yes, now you are speaking plainly, not in any figure of speech. Now we know that you know all things and do not need to have anyone question you. By this we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? The hour is coming. Indeed, it has come when you will be scattered, each one to his home, and you will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. I have said this to you, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you face persecution, but take courage, for I have conquered the world. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be, Thanks be to God. Please be seated. <laughs> no, I don't mind standing back here. Is it, uh, you could, you could stay in there. Yeah. So if you can get me on this, just so it's a little bit okay. So, so yesterday was Veterans Day. I don't know how everybody else did, I found that when evening came, I had not done an awful lot to remember veterans. And, and uh, this morning, it seemed apropos when I, when I got the call that I needed to get up and talk a little bit that, uh, that I could talk about veterans and um, maybe share some experiences and then invite others to share some experiences. I, I am a veteran. As a matter of fact, I, I wore my shirt. I have, to, I have to take this off. <laughs> this is my. I don't know. Throughout throughout the history of our country, we've seen veterans a little bit differently at different times, and uh, I would say that right now, people are probably predominantly much more appreciative of what's, what's taken place, what sacrifices have been made. And I want to mention really quick while I'm up here talking about this, I, I asked who had said the oath earlier, and I saw hands go up. How many people shared their life with someone who gave the oath? Okay, we are not forgetting about you. Your sacrifices were just as important, and your support of the military member who took the oath and went away and served. Uh, you're, you're very, very important as well as the, the, the veteran who served. I don't want to ever let anybody forget that. I was a, an Air Force veteran, and I, I will say I, it's been very humbling for me in many times when I've met veterans who have served in other ways. I was a nuclear missile technician, and it, it, was, it was a Monday through Friday job. I didn't work weekends. They never sent me overseas to be away from my family. I went home every night to my family. I had a different military experience than many. But what I did do was make sure that in my six years that I spent, this was during the Cold War, I got out in 1988. When I, um, when I got out and came home a year later, basically the Soviet Union began to dismantle. They took down the Berlin Wall. The Cold War ended. So. We won, 
Anybody ever look at it that way? We, it was a war, sort of. It was more a game of chess or a game of chicken. It was really a game of chicken as both sides waited for the other side to make a mistake or flinch. That didn't happen. When the war ended, we won. And what that means is not the United States team won the game, right? It meant, and, I, and I'll, I'll bring this into, um, into the story, but, but my friend Bill and I talk about this quite often. Regardless of who it is that's in two sides of a conflict, Jesus Christ is on the throne. Amen? Amen. So, so when the Cold War ended, more people were free in the grand scheme of things. It wasn't America versus the Soviet Union. It was, but that was the game part of it. But in reality, in the world, when everything ended, more people were safe, more people were uh, healthy, more people were able to go back to living lives in freedom. It's changing. As we watch today, what the things that are happening today, um, it's changing. But throughout all of this, we can never stop remembering that Jesus Christ is on the throne, and ultimately his will is going to be done. So when I, when I served, things are a little bit different than they are today. One of the, one of the big changes that's happened to, in our country is, um, I remember back in 93-ish, I was working down at the shipyard, and they came out and said, we're going to do what's called the woman at sea mod. We're recreating the ship so that we can bring women into uh, service on the ships. That kind of seemed like the beginning of it for me, but now today when we look at what's happening, women are now in all aspects of military life. All. I, does anybody know that there's anything left that women are not allowed to do? In the, they're on submarines. They're flying bombers. They're out on the battlefield carrying mortars, and they're doing it all. We were never ready for this. Okay, so let's, this generation, I'm looking out and I'm seeing mostly folks my age or older. We had gotten to the point where we sent our men off to service. We're sending our wives, our daughters, our moms, and some of them are not coming back. And some of them are coming back broken. And we have become much more unified as a country around that notion. It's different today, isn't it? You know, I, I sat and watched that, that video this morning and, and decided I wanted to share it with you. Um, these moms coming home and their kids running up to them. That, you know, that's not something for us that we remembered as kids. That didn't happen. That was very, very unusual. And so we, we, really, have to, we really have to stop and recognize the contributions that women have made to our service, not just the guys. But for all veterans, um, regardless of where... If you're a veteran, regardless of what your level of military service was, as I said, mine was, you know, it was, it was not hard. I'm still very proud of it and proud that while I was serving, I had Jesus Christ right here. He was with me the whole time and uh, took care of me. And so if, if you uh, remember folks who went through those things or you were one of those people who served, be proud. I want to I want to ask my friend Bob, who's a, a fellow Air Force veteran. I know we have a lot of Navy vets in the in the congregation. We we have this kind of little Air Force vice uh, Navy thing that goes back and forth. But uh, I've been working on Navy ships for the last 35 years and knowing a lot of folks from the Navy, and I get it. But Bob and I shared uh, very similar military experiences, and he had an experience recently that I would like him to get up and, and uh, share a little bit about, if he's got a few minutes. I won't do the strip tease that you did. <laughs> you just did. <laughs> you get it? Air Force, jeans, t-shirt. <laughs> With a Navy destroyer on it. A Navy destroyer. <laughs> As I mentioned last week, I had the honor and the privilege of representing actually millions of men that uh, gave in some manner, some giving all, uh, so that we could be here this morning to be free to worship our Christ. And so Ryan has asked me to 
present some of the things that uh, I experienced last week when I did go to Washington, along with 49 other veterans and their guardians, for a weekend that was wonderful but somber and a very humbling experience. The visuals are amazing. The names on those walls representing men that gave their all, men and women that gave their all. And to go through Arlington Cemetery, I really never could appreciate it until I did it last week. And just rows upon rows upon rows of tombstones showing the uh, men and women that, that did give their all. The, as I said, there were a lot of visuals, the names on the walls, the depictions of soldiers advancing, the contrails of jets flying vertically into the sky, the missing man formation, and I think most of you probably have seen that, but it is a, a very touching visual. And if you've never been to the tomb of the, the unknown soldier, it is a place you really need to go. As I, as I said, it was somber. It was quiet and respectful. In fact, there are signs there asking you to please be quiet and respectful. And the ceremony that goes on there in the changing of the guard Well, it'll bring tears to your eyes. It is amazing. And such precision. The, a lot of my memories come out, like Ryan and so many others, of some of the things that, that were said during our our time in the service, and like Ryan, I would not trade. I had four years in the Air Force. I was a Russian language specialist. I was in the Cold War, and I never had a bullet shot at me that I know of. And I sat there with headphones on, listening to conversations, and I was able to end my day and, and go home, and whereas so many soldiers and sailors and airmen and coast guardsmen uh, didn't have that, that privilege. But one of the things that comes to mind, as I said, some of the sayings that, that you remember from your military time there are no atheists in foxholes. Believe me, God is with us wherever we go and whatever we are doing. Another one which a Navy man taught me. That's, that's to give honor to the Navy, of course. But I did. After I served my active duty, I spent 30 years working for the Navy. But <laughs> there are no problems. There are only opportunities and challenges. And with God, we can face every one of them. The term buddies. Others who you will never forget for the rest of your life. I still communicate with a buddy that I had uh, in Texas <coughs> 63 years ago, I guess it was. 
but you gain many, many great buddies. And as Ryan referred to, women serving, and I'm very proud to say that Washington now has a memorial for women who served. And uh, we had three ladies from the state of Maine who were honored while we were down there. And it was very nice. Uh, it was excellent, really, to, to see that the women that had served, in a, the lady that actually heads up on a flight main is a retired lieutenant colonel. Uh, she was a nurse, and believe me, as lieutenant colonels and captains in the Navy, of course, can do. Well, well organized, and, and things were such, with, went with such precision. I think one of the main memories that I have in going to Washington was that, I mean, we were thanked by literally thousands of people. I mean, I don't know how many hands I shook or who shook my hand and thanked me. But there were so many young people that came up and said, thank you. This impressed me. It really did, because we see young people nowadays as, as perhaps not showing or having the respect that we elderly think they should have, but I think that is coming back, and that was uh, something that really stood out. But this, for me, was an honor and a privilege, and I simply represented so many that gave their all, or a lot more than I had to give. God bless them all. I'm so glad we had this opportunity today to, to do this, to talk, and, and to remember and to honor veterans. Is there anyone else that, that maybe has a short story they'd like to get up and share? If so, I'd welcome you now. You wanna, can you come up? Do you mind? So folks can hear you? You, you won't come out on the video. <laughs> well, you want everybody to hear your story. I told Bob this morning when he came in that I was fortunate to be married to two sailors, and I was. My first husband uh, st st served 26 years. He's now retired in Jacksonville. And my second husband, all of you know, is Blair. And Blair spent 22 years. And we both have families, and now they're blended. And our children are very respectful of any military because they're military kids, you know, and their children will also be, you know, be proud or are proud of their grandparents and great-grandparents and things like that. So I just wanted to share that, you know, even though I had two sailors, they both were wonderful men, nothing against either one, and... Uh, they both served their country very proudly. And they were in the fighting, sort of in a way. My first husband uh, uh, flew on C-130s out of Brunswick and then in Jacksonville before he retired. Blair was on a ship, many ships, two or three different ships. And he was a mechanic uh, on, and on flight deck, also worked on the flight deck of some carriers. So they, you know... They both served their country and were very proud to serve their country. And their children and grandchildren are very proud of them, as I am. Uh, even though it sounds crazy that I had two sailors, but that's okay. <laughs> it's all right. It was, it, it's fine. 
<laughs> you know, I basically love both of them, and that's the truth. So thank you very much. Amen. We love you, too. Anyone else have a story? Okay. Let's continue on with worship and uh, let's pray together the Lord's Prayer as Jesus handed down to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I just want to let everybody know, including those who are uh, worshiping with us online today, that uh, we, we uh, love to have you uh, join with us. In supporting our ministry, you can safely donate at bathumc.org slash give, or you can send us a check here to Bath United Methodist Church and, and help us out. We do an awful lot here. We're a small congregation, but uh, we're a mighty congregation, and a lot of things happen here at the Bath United Methodist Church. So join us. Next, announcements. I think probably the big one is going to be about the supper, but let's start out with the uh, with the weeklies. Tuesdays, Pastor's Bible Study is at 10. I would check in with Kelly this week. Uh, she's not feeling well today, so we'll need to find out if she's feeling well and whether she's going to lead her Bible study on Tuesday, but if she does, it'll be at 10 a.m. in person here at the church, or you can go online. We are having our big meeting today, the big meeting, right after church, so we'll gather right here over in the corner. If you're a member of one of the committees, we will be, uh, we'll be doing that right after the worship service. Diane also has a Bible study, and that's on Tuesdays at 2. And you can call Diane and find out uh, where and how if you want to join in, but everybody's welcome. So be part of that if you want to. Diane is not here with us today, but Kathy will give you the information if, uh, if you'd like to join. Next Saturday, November 18th, 4.30 to 6, this church for... For decades, it has been known for its suppers. COVID really put the kibosh to that, and we have not had one for a long time. So uh, if you're not able to, to support the supper this next Saturday with your presence, pray. We need all the prayers that we can get that this be a successful uh, reuniting with our community. It's one of the ways that we really unite with everybody in the Bath area. Uh, people stop, folks in this room all the time, me included, hey, when are you having another supper? So... Spread the word. Uh, we're, it'll be $10 for adults, four for kids, and we are having it's roast pork, right? Roast pork, creamy mashed potatoes, savory gravy, crispy green beans, all the good stuff. Sweet apple crisp finale. Sounds wonderful. And yes, and you'd like to share some more, Deanna? Yes. First of all, I want to thank everybody for donating to the needs. We've got more than enough money for that. Okay. Is there a time on Thursday the church will be open and folks will be here? Well, for people, if you wanted to drop things off? From 9 to 12, Julie's here, and I can be there in the afternoon. Okay. okay. All right. And if you're going to get the, the uh, supper and you haven't done that before or in, for a long time, it's been three years since we've had a supper. And it's one early because we'll give you a little orientation to it.
Please be seated. As we come to the end of our time that we spend with the folks online, I'd like to say God bless you and God bless all veterans and all people who currently serve as we continue to pray for you and for them. Thanks for joining us. We are. Somebody, somebody want to cut that off before that goes out the window? <laughs>